And my name is Teague Haller, and I did my artist research presentation on J.J. Abrams' childhood. Um, in terms of family, in terms of family, family life, J.J. Abrams was born on June 27, 1966, in New York City. His parents are Gerald W. Abrams, who was a veteran television producer, as well as Carol Ann Kelvin, who is a Peabody Award-winning television executive producer, as well as an author and law academic. He also has a sister named Tracy Rosen, who is now a screenwriter, and JJ's parents are Polish and Jewish. By 1971, the Abrams moved from New York to Los Angeles, where Abrams went to school. He attended Palis Palisades High School and originally planned on going to art, art school rather than a traditional college. However, eventually he enrolled at Sarah Lawrence College back in Bronxville, New York. Early career. His first steps in the film industry. By the time he was 16, he got his first job in the film industry as a writer for the music in Don Dollar's 1982 horror movie called Night Beast. Although the movie didn't do too well, it got Abrams' name out there in the industry and was a good look for him back, back in the day considering he was only 16. collaborations with Jill Mazursky. During his senior year at college, he teamed up with Jill Mazursky, the daughter of the award-winning writer-director Paul Mazursky. They were to write the feature film treat. They were to write a feature film treatment, and that treatment was brought by was bought by Touchstone Productions and became the basis for Taking Care of Business. This was Abrams's first produced film. Um, following Taking Care of Business, the two went on to write Gone Fishing, which featured actors Danny Glover as well as Joe Pesci. It was a poorly reviewed film by critics, however, apart from them, the film is seen as quite entertaining, innocent, and easy for most people to enjoy. Contributions to Shrek. In 1994, Abrams worked alongside with some Sarah Lawrence alumni in a group called the Propellerheads. They were experimenting with computer animation and technology and were eventually contracted to develop the animation for Shrek. And on the right is the uh, original animation style. The amazing fairy tale world of Shrek was born out of an extraordinary union. Hundreds of computer technicians and traditional artists working together to realize a very specific artistic vision. In computer animation, everything must be created from scratch. Characters, sets, camera movements, lighting, and visual effects all begin in the minds of the artists. But before the first frame of animation... Felicity. In 1998, Abrams made his first steps into the, tele into the television world with Felicity, a series that he co-created with Matt Reeves. It ran for four seasons and was on the Warner Brothers Network. Abrams also composed its opening theme music. film career. In the early 2000s, um, it was a big decade for Abrams. To start things off, he co-created his own production company called Bad Robot in 2001 with Brian Burke. Following this, Abrams, following this, Abrams executive produced ABC's Alias as well as, Lo as, well as Lost when it, and then went on to make his directional debut with Mission Impossible 3, which was in 2006. In the late 2000s, um, Abrams produced Cloverfield in 2008. It was a monster movie shot through the perspective of an iPhone. Um, personally, I really, really like that movie. Um, I've seen it a few times. And um, to finish off the 2000s, he went on to direct Shrek, which I've also seen and quite enjoy.
Say something to him before he leaves. Rob's awesome. I'm gonna miss it. Rob, have fun in Japan. You owe me eleven dollars. How are you gonna survive without Rob? He's like your main dude. Yeah, I know. Hey, how am I gonna survive without you? I don't know. I'm like your main dude. <laughs> In the 2010s, Abrams started off strong by writing and directing the Paramount science fiction thriller Super 8 in 2011. The film starred Joel Courtney and Al Fanning. He co-produced it with Steven Spielberg and Brian Burke. Super 8 is my personal favorite project by Abrams. Um, I just really liked, like like all the kids running around and having an adventure and all that. Um, it tells a really good story. I really like the story. Um, I think it's pretty visually pleasing too, despite all like the lens flares and all that, which are kind of excessive, but um, yeah. Here's the trailer for that. I've got nothing against your friends. I like your friends. No, things have obviously changed for us. I have to help Charles finish his movie. Be good for you to spend some time with kids who don't run around with cameras and monster makeup. Uh, could you close your eyes, please? Yeah. And action! freighter derailed what the cargo was on that freighter we don't know we can't tell anyone i know i understand you have concerns about our cargo colonel there isn't anything else that i should know with sir i can assure you the answer is no we've got calls from people who found local dogs but the calls coming in aren't local Lucy! it's like they all just ran away i've got property damage i've got theft I've got nine people missing now. Clearly, things happening around here that I can't explain. We have to find this thing. I don't feel good about this. Go! I saw it. No one believes me. I believe you. What the hell? And his contribution contributions to Star Wars. On January 25th, 2013, Disney and Lucasfilm introduced J.J. Abrams as the director and producer of Star Wars The Force Awakens. 
He also co-wrote the screenplay. Following the film's success, he returned to direct and co-write Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker in 2017. Um, and this film received very mixed thoughts um, from critics and fans, um, which I agree, I really didn't like it. But <laughs> And um, in my eyes, I find J.J. Abrams' work to be unique mainly because of the way his newer films look. Whether you find it visually pleasing or not, Abrams uses excessive amounts of lens flares and sticks to a pretty strict color palette of um, cooler tones. Um, not, not that I enjoy it myself, but however, um, what he does to make his films look the way they do is very unique in my opinion, and I find it pretty fascinating. Um, you don't really see too many other directors like doing what he's doing with his like visuals and um, aesthetics, so. Um, I think it's bold of him to really, really do that, um, even though some might not like it. And um, why I chose J.J. Abrams? I chose J.J. Abrams for this project because he was my favorite um, director growing up, and I didn't even know it back in middle school. <clears throat> back in middle school, sci-fi movies were all that I'd watch, and um, this led me to watch all of the Cloverfield movies, the new Star Wars movies. Super 8, as well as all of the Star Trek, the newer Star Trek movies that he worked on, um, and I really enjoyed all of these, um, all while not knowing that the same guy, J.J. Abrams, worked on every single one of them, which I find pretty funny. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I find his work unique, and that's why I like him. Um, yeah, that's it. Here are my sources. Yeah. Thank you.